So boxer Mohammed Ali has has died. He died on June third, two thousand sixteen. Um, he was born in he was born Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr. in Louisville, K- Kentucky, and um, he won his. So he started do, uh, boxing when he was twelve years old. Then in in his early twenties, he won his first. Um, he won the World Heavyweight Championship against Sonny Liston in 1964. Soon afterwards, um, Cassius Clay converted to Islam. He joined the Nation of Islam, um, which was um, associated with Malcolm X at that period of time. He changed his name to Ali, Muhammad Ali. Um, and then in 1966, he got in trouble because he refused to, he was conscripted into the U.S. military to fight in Vietnam, and he refused to go, so um, I guess they they found him guilty of of draft evasion, took away his boxing titles, banned him from boxing, I guess. I think, I'm not sure if they put him in jail, too. But anyway, he, he basically said that he's not going to go to some country on the other side of the world and fight people who he has, he doesn't have anything against. And I, I agree with um, I agree with what Muhammad Ali said. That's that's one of the most um, I think that's, that's one of the most respectable things that he did. He was in the fight in, in Vietnam. And so he he went on to win more championships in the 1970s heavyweight championships. There was a thrill in Manila against Joe Frazier Frazier. And the Rumble in the Jungle against George Foreman, and that was in Zaire, I think. He retired in 1981. Then soon after that, in the early 1980s, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, which presumably was um, brought on by taking bull shots to the head from boxing, because a lot of a lot of boxers suffer brain damage from boxing, which pretty obvious if you're taking if you get if you get punched in the head for a living you may suffer some brain damage and if, and the same thing goes for a lot of a- athletes who people who play sports professionally where they take shots to the head a lot or they take they suffer a lot of head trauma a lot of them do suffer brain damage um, and they may suffer from things like Parkinson's or whatever you know brain damage basically um, you have football players, you have soccer players, you have hockey players as well, suffering from brain damage um, due to repeated blows to the head, repeated concussions and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, so for a long time, Ali was very incapacitated. He was, um, he, with the Parkinson's disease, he really see before when he was younger when he was healthier he was always very articulate talked a lot very brash and um, when he had got the Parkinson's he couldn't really talk so much anymore couldn't really he didn't go out as much in public and in everything obviously he couldn't box anymore and um, but he did like the tart at the 1996 Atlanta Olympics um, so he died he was he was 74 years old when he died in on uh, in Scottsdale Arizona I guess at his his um, I guess um, I assume he had an estate in Arizona uh, anyway and um, but back to when he the draft refusing to be drafted I think that's very respectable what he did because I agree 100% with that refusing to be drafted or refusing to be conscripted into bullshit wars because if he, if Ali, so let me put it like this, if, if you're in a country and the country doesn't, if the, the government and the government representatives don't treat you well in your own country, why should you go to a foreign country that has nothing to do with you and fight a war that has nothing to do with you? That's stupid. That's idiotic. I would personally say if they 
the government mistreated me and then tried to draft me to war, I would tell them to kiss my asshole. I would tell them to kiss my whole asshole and go fuck themselves and put me in. I would tell them to put me in jail. I would rather go to jail and fight in jail for myself on my own behalf than go to some country I don't know anything about on the other side of the world and fight in some war that has nothing to do with me against people who I really have nothing I have nothing against so I agree so what what Muhammad Ali's stance I agree with it and I I would make this I would take the same stand but with Ali it was a big it was a big deal because he was a public person a very a high profile person so they they decided to they really wanted to make an example of him and go after him because they wanted him they wanted to, to draft these the United States they like to I think they want to draft these high profile people sometimes into the military when they have these wars because those people will get more people to want to join the army like I think they drafted Elvis for example into the army I can't remember what what war which war it was but. I think they wanted, it was like a publicity thing for them. It may have been the Korean War and they drafted Elvis. But anyway, when Ali re refused to take the draft, that set an example where other people would refuse as well. So it could be like a domino reaction where you have more people refusing to um, accept, refusing to go to take the draft. And so I think so that's probably why the government and some people were very angry at him. Now as far as the Vietnam War goes, that that was a bullshit war in my opinion because um first of all, they didn't have to um the war didn't have to happen in the first place because the whole conflict was really caused by by um after so Vietnam was a French colony and um the the in, um, after in World War Two it was occupied by Japan and then after World War Two um, there was Ho a guy named Ho Chi Minh and his group wanted to um, make the country independent but France wanted to come back and take the country over again and rule the country again but and the United States supported France but that went against um, I. So, like the the general trend that happened after the Second World War was all these former colonies becoming independent. So you had, for example, India becoming independent in 1947, I think, and all these other colonies, former colonies, were becoming independent. And um, so that was the general trend. But France was trying to keep to hold on to its colonies, or reestablish control over its colonies. But that went against the general trend that was happening. So by uh, the United States and other Western countries supporting the um, French coming back to take over the country, they they created a conflict. And then if you have, if the United States, if France is fighting against um, the Ho Chi Minh and the people that want, want independence, and he's being support, the French are being supported by the um, Americans, then the others, the people fighting for independent or Ho Chi Minh is going to get support from the Soviet Union, which is the enemy of the United States. So they kind of pushed um, Ho Chi Minh, in my opinion, towards the communists, even though Ho Chi Minh already had ties to communists. He was already part of the Communist Party. But they, but I think if, if they had, um, if they had get, given Vietnam independence, then they may, it may have been uh, not like Vietnam may not have been a hardcore communist country. It may have been a, um, they may have been more friendly towards the United States, but then, but anyway, they, they created an, an unnecessary war in my opinion. And they really, it wasn't a war that they could win because they just couldn't win the war. They didn't have a chance to win the war. So it was just a waste of people's lives. And it was really a kind of political thing. Like they're making a point. Um, they were trying to stand, um, make a point to the Soviet Union. They were, they were, the politicians didn't want to look weak in front of their electorate, in front of their opponents. They didn't want to. They wanted to look like they were hard on communism, but at the same time, you have people dying over there in Vietnam. So, 
you have, so so basically um, the way I look at it is why should why should Muhammad Ali or why should just the average American person go to Vietnam and die so some politician could make a political point that's not even like the they didn't the war wasn't going it didn't have any purpose it was just they're just trying to make a point they're just grandstanding so I agree a hundred percent with what um, with what Muhammad Ali did and refu in refusing to take the draft refusing to accept the draft I don't see why people should fight for bullshit wars I would definitely refuse to fight for any bullshit war by some politicians or some people that don't even like me, don't even treat me well. I say fuck you, suck my dick, and and um, you can put me. They can put me in jail because I'm not. I wouldn't. I would refuse to go to some fucking bullshit war. They could kiss my asshole. They could go fuck themselves. They could shove. They could go. They could take a tampon and go. <laughs> anyway, they can go fuck themselves because I'm not. I would refuse a hundred percent to go fight in some fucking bullshit war. And you can put that on the record. I don't. I don't. I would. I would. I hundred percent would refuse to ever be conscripted in any fucking bullshit war on the other side of the world for some interests that have no benefit to me. And in the United States, they were mistreating African American people at that period of time and if you look at the uh, the draft to Vietnam it was predominant it was disproportionately African American people so you had for example all these people were getting exemptions basically privileged white people were given exemptions and they disproportionately drafted um, low like poor black people were being disproportionately drafted poor people in general but um, I guess black people, African Americans, um, tend to, on average, had lower income, so they were more likely to be drafted. So, and, and then you know the rich white people, like they had a song about it. I can't remember what, what the song. Fortunate son, I think. Fortunate one, something. Anyway, there was a song in the 1960s where they um, were talking about that. There, someone was a senator's son or. They were the son of some rich person. They would get exempted from having to go to Vietnam, but if they were a poor, poor person, they would have to go there and fight in this bullshit war that didn't have any real purpose except the grandstand and make a make a make a point. But it it, it was a war that was never going to be won. So, I I think Muhammad Ali in that instance set a very good example. Um, of what people should do because fighting in bullshit wars is stupid fighting in bullshit wars to for someone else's interest that has nothing to do with you that's idiotic and I would never support that I would never sign up for that I would never agree to that they could put me they could put me in jail I don't care I'm not going to any fucking bullshit war and they, you know, I would tell them to go fuck themselves. I would tell them to their face to go fuck themselves. I would stand up in court, tell them to go fuck themselves. I'm not fighting in their fucking bullshit war. And that's how I feel about it.